up, LTWC family and friends? It's Cherie with your Sunday announcements. Now, if this is your first time joining us, welcome. We're so excited that you decided to worship with us today, and we want to connect with you before you go. Now, you can do that one of three ways. First, you can text LTWC to the number below. Or if you're in person, you can scan that QR code right on the back of the seat in front of you and find out all things LTWC. Or if you're in person, you can also go out to our connection table in the lobby and one of our connection team members will be there to greet you. Again, welcome. We are so happy to have you here today and be sure to connect with us before you go. Bible study is starting back up and we are excited. Studying the Word of God is the heart of who we are at LTWC. Small group Bible study helps us learn about God together in a safe, judgment-free environment. And when we study together, we build relationships and deepen our faith. Bible study is transformational and we want you to be a part. Bible study will kick off February 7th at 6.30 p.m. And like always, on the first night, communion will be taken up immediately before. And communion is a time where we recognize and acknowledge the sacrifice made for you and me. So registration is open today in the Church Center app. Let's make it another great semester. Friends, how many of us have them? <laughs> <laughs> All right, LTWC, we are excited to announce that Bring a Loved One Sunday is February 11th. Be sure to invite a friend, family member, really anyone, to join you for a service filled with love, encouragement, and worship. Now, our church is more than just a building. It's a community of believers who come together to grow our faith, and we look forward to sharing that spirit of love with our guests. LTWC is hosting the Love Isn't Lost Marriage Enrichment Conference on Friday, February 23rd and Saturday, February 24th. Singles and dating couples will be encouraged to make God-led plans for their future and married couples will learn how to reignite their flame in their union. Full details, including registration fees and speakers, are available now on the Church Center app. Please note that registration for Friday is officially closed and there's only a few more spots left for Saturday. Also, if you're in need of childcare, please be sure to contact Kathy Holmes. Again, registration for Saturday is limited. Go to the Church Center app, register today. See you there. And those are your Sunday announcements. It's Cherie signing out. I pray you all have an incredible week. Now let's get ready for a powerful word. Well, while you're clapping, can we stand all over the building and give God some praise, give him some honor, give him some glory, because he's worthy of it, amen? Because he's worthy of it, amen? Now, if this hand clap was for me, it would be okay. But can we pause for the calls and give a hand clap and a verbal acknowledgement to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords? Let it resound in heaven. Let's bombard heaven. Let's pull on his heartstrings this morning. God, you're amazing. God, there's nobody like you. Lord, you are all I need and more. Lord, you're all that and a bag of chips. I would have lost my mind if it had not been for you. I wouldn't be here if it was not for the Lord on my side. And so we glorify you and we bless your name this morning. We thank you, oh God, for who you are because we know that there is nobody like you and there is nothing wrong with you. You are a perfect God. So we thank you for meeting us here. We thank you for touching our hearts. 
We thank you for touching our minds. We thank you for a fresh wind that will continue to blow in every aisle, in every seat, in every life, in every representative of every family that is standing in this room. He's here. You are here. And we just ask that you feel the room. Feel the room. Room. Feel the room. Feel the room. Allow your room, allow your word to take root and let it produce fruit so that your people may be edified, so that you may be glorified, and so that the enemy may be horrified at what you're about to do in our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. And we clap our hands like the enemy is right in between our hands. We clap our hands because we know the enemy is horrified at what he's doing in your life, and what he's doing in your life, and what he's doing in your life, and what he's doing in your life. We give him glory and we give him praise. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I feel good. I feel his presence. And I am so blessed to be in the house of God one more time. I'm grateful for our leader, Pastor Hawkins. Can we give a hand clap of praise for an amazing leader? And to his amazing wife, Lady Hawkins, so grateful for you. Thank you so much. And to this amazing church body, so grateful to have a strong ministry and a strong church, especially transitioning to a new place. You need a consistent word, amen? You need a covering and you need a house that will allow you to nurture your gifts. And so I am so grateful for this awesome um, just theme and that we have for this entire month. The bounce back is real. Can anybody testify that the bounce back is real? Amen. If I can just think and just look back on where my life was a year from now, I will run all up and through this church because I know that the bounce back is real. And when you have a testimony like that, you can do nothing but continue to praise God for where he has brought you and for where he is taking you. Even today, I have with me my latest book that was just released a month ago called New Kid on the Block, The Art of Starting Over. This is the blueprint to your bounce back, how to start over, how to start fresh, how to trust God when you thought you were done. How I many you know that's the hardest thing? To trust God to start something new when you thought you was done? Wait a minute, Lord. We doing this again? That's the bounce back. And so I'm grateful for a testimony. It didn't feel good at the time, but we praise God for what he has done. And we thank God for the bounce back. So catch me after service. I will be signing them and allow God to be a blessing into your life. We're going to jump right into the word of God. If you have your devices, your handouts, again, for those that still bring their Bibles to church, pull that thing out and let's you don't have to turn very far. Genesis, the 50th chapter. That's that book right in the front. <laughs> Genesis, the 50th chapter. And the 19th verse, and it reads, Joseph said to them, do not be afraid, for am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant it for evil against me. But God meant it for good. But God, how many of you are grateful for a but God today? 
but God meant it for good in order to accomplish what is being done as it is this day to save many people's lives. And for a supporting text, 1 Corinthians chapter 4 and 17, for this light affliction, no, it's not too heavy, no, it's not too much than you can bear. No, this is not a load that you have to carry by yourself, but this light affliction, which is but for a moment. Isn't that good news? It's not going to last always. Trouble don't last always. This is not an eternity, but it has an expiration date for a moment. And guess what is working for us this is not just so I can be in pain I'm not going through this just to go through the rhetoric God didn't put me here in this season just to watch me fall but it is working for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. And for a title this morning to go along with this amazing thing, the bounce back is real. My moment is working for me. Amen. My moment is working for me. So before we get into the text and all of this familiar story that we know so well about Joseph, we must first introduce the main character, which is Joseph. As we all know, Joseph was Jacob's favorite son. And he even wore a coat of many colors representing power to distinct him from his other brothers. Now, I mentioned this in the first service. I do love to shop. And, you know, that in itself is a spirit. I love nice clothes, and they even have now that when you leave something in your cart, they have the nerve to email you and be like, oh, you forgot this, sis. I know I forgot it. I don't need a reminder. That's the devil, too. But one thing that I've learned from this text is that if I ever had a coat that made somebody want to kill me, that's certainly a coat that I would not want to keep. Let alone would I want to even have to go around to have to endure such a process all because of a coat. But God knew that it was deeper than a coat. He knew that it was deeper than just jealousy. He knew that there was even a purpose behind the level of rejection that Joseph had to endure because he had seen it all before with his father, Jacob. You see, Jacob experienced rejection from his own father. You remember the birthright? Jacob found himself wrestling for a birthright that was released to him. We don't say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Esau. We say the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. That means this was a multi-generational promise that was released to him. But he still found himself wrestling for it. And I came to encourage a room full of Josephs and Jacobs to let you know to stop wrestling for stuff that God has already released. Stop wrestling for stuff that already belongs to you. That God has already put your name on it. You don't have to wrestle for it. And so here Jacob is. He's already been rejected as a child. So now he is hell bent on not rejecting his son Joseph. So he does the complete opposite. And he favors him. 
And this begins to develop dissension and betrayal among his brothers. His own would not receive him. They sold Joseph for 20 pieces of silver, put him in bondage, and brought him into a strange land. Joseph was put in prison, but went down into the prison and began ministering and began prophesying and began interpreting dreams and allowed his gifts to make room for him, even though he was in such a bad place. You know, God will orchestrate these types of seasons so that we do not forget the character of God. God wants us to have a memory of who he is no matter what place we are in. So here he is in prison, but his gifts are making room for him. And he has been favored with the king. He's been favored with Pharaoh. This moment of chains was working for Joseph. This moment of bondage was working for Joseph. And what everybody meant for his bad, God meant for his good. Here in the text, now we're moving back to chapter 40, and it says, And sure enough, on the third day, it was Pharaoh's birthday, and he threw a feast for all his servants. He set the head cupbearer and the head baker in places of honor in the presence of all the guests. Then he restored the head cupbearer to his cupbearing post. He handed Pharaoh his cup just as before. And then he impaled the head baker on a post, following Joseph's interpretations exactly. But the head cupbearer never gave Joseph another thought. He forgot all about him. You know how somebody owe you something? And then when you see them, they act like they don't know you? What did Cardi say? When I see you and I don't speak, that means, up, oh, don't, y'all not say. <laughs> He forgot all about him. And if anything, he remembered, but he chose not to be the blessing that Joseph was to him. And I'm sure during this time, Joseph felt as though God was not even with him. Joseph watched the butler, the baker, the candlestick maker get set free only to have him be left in prison. You've seen God deliver people, bless people, give them a new house, bless them with a family. They're getting married. They're getting degrees. They're buying homes. They're being delivered only to have you be left right in the same situation that you were in to ask God, well, what about me? Why have you passed over me? Why have you forgotten me? Even in your handouts, we have this text that we can go just a, a little further to remember. But before we do that, there are four ways that God shows us protection in our rejection. God will create a problem. God will plan an environment. God will design a season and God will uproot a presence. God will create a problem. God will plan an environment. God will design a season. And God will uproot a presence. When you are in the midst of rejection, God is preparing you for this bounce back. As crazy as it sounds, he will create a problem. When you cannot see the plan, that means he's creating a problem. God will create a problem to make your gift important. 
You wonder, what am I supposed to do? What is my purpose? How am I supposed to utilize these gifts? I'm down in the prison. What am I possibly doing here? He will create a problem to make your gift important. Sometimes you got to be careful when life don't seem fair. Because it's actually an advantage to be disadvantaged when you've asked God to pull you out of something and he leaves you right in the middle of it all because he knows he can bless you more keeping you there than he can pulling you out because he's creating a problem. Sit still. He's creating a problem. Don't stop trusting God. He's creating a problem. Don't stop waiting on him. He's creating a problem. Let me tell you something. God will plan an environment that will cause you to be rejected so that you don't rest beneath your destiny. God will design a season so that you would rather adjust your life to their absence than adjust your destiny to their presence. God will uproot their presence just so he can upgrade your purpose. Hear me today. God will uproot their presence so that he can upgrade your purpose. The heartbreak was for a reason. The rejection was for a reason. The dismissal was for a reason. The breakup was for a reason. You got fired for a reason you lost that for a reason that setback was a setup for your bounce back in fact we interrupt this regularly scheduled program to bring you this important message that rejection was God's protection I said that rejection was God's protection I may not be your first choice but I'm God's choice I may not be your pick but God has picked me I may not be your favorite but I walk in the favor of God and this season God was setting me up I know you think you were rejected but you were being upgraded do I have any Joseph's in the building that have been upgraded and I believe that it was evangelist Beyonce that said let me upgrade you I know they left you but you've been upgraded I know you thought you lost that but you've been upgraded I know you felt set aside but you've been upgraded I know you thought you missed out but you were upgraded I feel that in the spirit today you've been upgraded 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 if I have I'm gonna give you about 30 seconds to give God some praise for your upgrade your status just changed your status just changed your status just changed your status just changed you've been upgraded from the back of the line to the front of the line you've been upgraded from the background to the forefront you've been upgraded from the pit and the prison to the palace you've been upgraded somebody open up your mouth and give God some praise for the upgrade you've been upgraded our text in your handouts 1 Peter 2 and 4 it says welcome to the living stone the stone that the builders rejected, the source of life. The workmen took one look and threw it out, but God set it in the place of honor. The chief cornerstone, the stone that the builders rejected, they took one look at it and threw it out. But God 
set it in the place of honor. God always has a plan for our bounce back. God always has a plan for our rejection. There are three areas that God utilizes his plan during our bounce back season. First of all, purpose. Second, seed. And third, legacy. Purpose, seed, and legacy. Every season of Joseph's life was initiated by God to bring him purpose. Every season of rejection, failure, disappointment was initiated by God for his purpose. If it had not been for the betrayal, Joseph would have never worked with Potiphar. His moment was working for him. Had it not been for the lie of Potiphar's wife, he would have never worked with Pharaoh. This moment was working for him. Had it not been for the jealousy of his brothers, he would have never became the governor. This moment was working for him. As we even go further along in the text, now moving to chapter 42, it says, when Jacob learned that there was food in Egypt, he said to his sons, why do you sit around here and look at one another? I've heard that there is food in Egypt. Go down there and buy some so that we can survive and not starve to death. Ten of Joseph's brothers went down to Egypt to get food. Jacob didn't send Joseph's brother Benjamin with them. He was afraid that something bad might happen to him too. So Israel's sons joined everyone else that was going to Egypt to buy food for Canaan too, was hit hard by the famine. Joseph was running the country. Joseph was running the country. You know that one that you threw in the pits? You know that one that you was hating on over a little coat? You know that one that you were happy was on their downfall? Yeah, Joseph was running the country. He was the one who gave out rations to all the people. When Joseph's brothers arrived, they treated him with honor, bowing to him. Joseph recognized them immediately, but treated them as strangers and spoke roughly to them. He said, where do you come from? From Canaan, they said, we've come to buy food. Joseph knew who they were, but they didn't know who he was. You know, after you get your glow up and folks don't recognize you, but they in your face anyway, like back then you didn't know me. Now I'm hot you all up on me. And this is what he is experiencing. But the one thing Joseph couldn't deny is that he knew how seeds worked. Joseph understood that every dark place that he was planted in, God pulled him out with a harvest. Every dark place that Joseph was planted in, God pulled him out with a harvest. Let's run it back. He was planted in the pit and he was pulled out with a Potiphar. He was planted in the prison and he was pulled out with a Pharaoh. Even when he was alone in the transition of being planted in the palace, he was pulled out with a whole government. Where they do that at? Where I go from being in the pit to now I'm the governor. Every dark place that he was planted in, God pulled him 
out with a harvest. And whatever dark place that you are planted in, God will pull you out with a harvest because you are being developed in the dark. Hear me. There is a place in darkness where God will sift you in order to save you. There is a place in darkness where God will be isolating you in order to impart into you. There is a place in darkness where he will be preparing you for the light. But before the light can come, before the stage can come, before the open door can come, before the platforms can come, he has to prepare you in the dark. It's the first thing that he teaches us in Genesis. He said, in the beginning, God created the heaven and earth. He said, let there be light. And darkness ran from the face of the deep. Darkness ran ran from the light. Darkness did not stop God from moving. And whatever dark place that you are in, it does not stop God from moving. In fact, he does his best work in the dark. He does his best work when I feel like I'm by myself and I have to get in my prayer closet and say a few words to him. He does his best work when I feel like I'm in this thing and nobody else understands and all I can do is cry out to God he does his best work in the dark and I came to just remind a few people this morning that your first teacher was wrong when he said you couldn't learn. He met you before God put you in the dark. But after this, your first leader was wrong when they said you weren't called. But after this, your first boyfriend was wrong when they said you weren't worthy. But after this, your first bully was wrong when they said you weren't good enough. But after this, your first job was wrong when they said you didn't qualify. But after this, that first school was wrong when they said you were not on that level yet but after this they met you before God put you in the dark but after this you shall come forth <laughs> Joseph knew that his moment was working for him but he had to understand it he had to believe it. Let me tell you something. There is power in the perception of your process. There is power in the perception of your process. It's one thing to be going through and you don't even know why. You don't know what God is doing. You don't know why you're going through this. Why are they throwing me in the pit, God? Now why am I being locked up? It's one thing to be going through, and you don't even know why. But it's another thing when the perception of what you are going through helps you get through it a little bit better. I don't know. I don't know why I'm here. But one thing I do know, God is up to something. No, this doesn't feel good. But one thing I do know, God is going to get the glory. Yes, I do feel by myself. But one thing I do know is after this, I'm going to get up with more fight I'm gonna get up stronger and I'm going to get up better I may not be a millionaire yet but I perceive that section 8 was building me for greatness I may not be healed yet but I perceive that this sickness was building my faith I may not be where I want to be yet but I perceive that he has thoughts of peace to give me a future and to give me an expected end I perceive that after I get out of this God is building me for a 
higher. I perceive that after I've suffered a while, I will be perfected and established and strengthened and settled. I perceive that he who has begun a good work in me is going to complete it. So the next time God wants to bless me, but I say, oh, I'll never be happy. You speak to that spirit and you say, weeping may endure for a night, but joy comes in the morning. My moment is working. The next time God wants to favor me, but I say, oh, it'll never work. You speak to that spirit and you say, all things work together for the good of those that love him and are called according to his purpose. My moment is working. The next time God wants to increase you, but you say, Lord, I'll never have enough. You speak to that spirit and you say, I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging for bread. My moment is working. The next time God wants to call you, but you say, Lord, I'll never be ready. You speak to that spirit and you say, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. My moment is working. The next time God wants to change you, but you say, oh, I've sinned too much. You speak to that spirit and you say, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. My moment is working for me. I said my moment is working for me. My moment is working for me. I may not see it, but I sure do believe it. That it's working. 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 It's working for me. My moment is working for me. My moment is working for me. My moment is working for me. Our text today says, Joseph said to them, do not be afraid. For am I in the place of God? But as for you, you meant it for evil against me. You meant it for my bad. You meant it for my downfall. But God meant it for good. In order to accomplish what is being done, as it is this day, to save many people's lives. You know, sometimes when you are hungry for something and God sends it, you reject it because your hunger was not great enough to make you move beyond your fears. Your hunger was not great enough to make you move beyond your fears. And we are in a season where you cannot afford to be afraid. You can't afford to go higher. You can't afford to be afraid of going higher. You can't afford to be afraid of your bounce back. You can't afford to be afraid of God elevating you or promoting you or changing your life in such a way. Because Joseph, he stepped into a governor position just in time to mediate on behalf of his family. So a lot of times, the things that you go through, the rejection you experience, the bounce back you experience, it's not just for you, but it's for those connected to you. When we look in here, we see, even on your handouts, we have 1 Peter 5 and 10, but may the God of all grace who called us to his eternal glory by Christ Jesus. 
after you have suffered a while, perfect, establish, strengthen, and settle you. Sounds like legacy to me. Philippians 1 and 6, being confident in this very thing, that he who has begun a good work in you will complete it. That means it doesn't stop with you, but it continues on with your legacy. Sounds like legacy to me. Because when I get out of this, I want to leave something in my family that has never been left before. I want to do something in my family that has never been done before. I want to kick things off in my family that ain't never been kicked off before. I want to break some things in my family that have never been broken before. Because my creator created me to create something different. And I was not created to do what was already been done. Because we don't do basic around here. There's levels to this and we do not serve a basic God. And I don't know who lied to you and told you that you were basic, but I came to decree and to declare to every person under the sound of my voice that you are not basic, but you are a big deal. He did. He created mankind with detail. He created the galaxy with detail. He created the earth with detail so why in the world would he make you basic and I want to decree and to plant in your spirit today that this bounce back is not because you are some ordinary person it's not because you are some small minded person but it is because you are a big deal I want to decree and declare I want to come against every spirit that ever told you that you were small every spirit that ever told you that you weren't good enough every spirit that ever told you to give up every spirit that ever told you to doubt and fear every spirit that ever told you that you were stupid every spirit that ever told you that you could not make it every spirit Spirit that ever told you that you were basic I decree and I want you to put your hand on your own self and say I'm a big deal now I want you to open up your mouth and put, say it with your chest against the enemy. Allow the enemy to know that I'm nothing to play with. Allow the enemy to know that I'm a force to be reckoned with. Allow the enemy to know this is not going to take me out, but I'm a big deal. Now I want you to stand on your feet and find somebody on your row so that they know what you're working with and I want you to decree in this atmosphere I'm a big deal I'm a big deal I let rejection know I'm a big deal let depression know I'm a big deal let discouragement know I'm a big deal let anxiety know I'm a big deal yeah yeah let doubt know I'm a big deal let fear know I'm a big deal Our text says, for this light affliction is but for a moment and is working for me. A more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. You see, Joseph, he stepped in his governor position. He stepped from obscurity to aristocracy. He stepped from rags to riches. He stepped from the lowest point of his life to the highest point of his life. And whatever bounce back, you are experiencing you gotta step in it stop crying and step in it stop being fearful and step in it stop being afraid and step in it stop hiding and step in it stop downplaying it and step in it 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 
In fact, I want everybody in this room to get on one accord. When I count to three, I need for you to take the biggest step of your life. Now, it doesn't have to be a huge step, but in your spirit, it does. I need for you to take the biggest step of your life. For every comeback kid in this building, for every bounce back that is being prepared as we speak, every person that has been waiting on a bounce back, every person that has been waiting for a comeback, every person that has been waiting for your status to change, every person that has been waiting for an upgrade. When I count to three, I want you to step into it. I don't care if you just got a step in front of your seat. I don't care if you make a step into the aisle. I don't care if you step at this altar, but we're gonna be on one accord today. And we're gonna allow the enemy to know that this season, you thought it was over for me. You thought you had the last laugh. You thought I was gonna be too tired. You thought that I was going to give up. You thought that I was going to throw in the towel, but I am stepping into my bounce back. On the count of three, do I have some Joseph in the building that's ready for a bounce back? One, two, three, stop! I'm stepping into my comeback. I'm stepping into my bounce back. I'm stepping into my new season. I'm stepping into my next level. You thought it was over, but I'm just getting started. You thought I was finished, but I'm just getting started. You thought that you counted me out, but I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. I'm just getting started. It's working for me. It's working for me. It's working for me. The pit, it was working for me. The prison, it was working for me. The rejection, it was working for me. The throw out, it was working for me. 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 Oh, thank you, Jesus. It was good for me. It was good for me. It was good for me that I have been afflicted because now I know your word. Now I know your grace now I know your power now I know your love now I know your faithfulness my moment is working for me somebody lift your hands in this building I need somebody to praise God like you're about to lose your mind because your moment is working for you it's working for you it's working for you it's working for you all things are working together all things are working together all things are working together because I love him and because I'm called according to his purpose it's working for me my moment is working for me and every person under the sound of my voice I want you to get that in your spirit, not just for today, because we come against the enemy that will try and choke up every word that God wants to deposit in your spirit. This is a season where God is already ready for your bounce back. We are waiting on God and God is waiting on us. 
We want God to help us so that we can bounce back. And God wants us to bounce back so that he can help us as we bounce back. But we've got to declare and decree in our own spirits that every moment that we experience, yes, it was meant for my bad. Yes, they were against me. Yes, I did experience this hurt. I did experience this disappointment. I did experience this rejection. But that moment was working for me. And as we are preparing for our prayer counselors to come, I want you to get in your spirit and in your heart. What are you asking God to give you a refreshing in? What type of second wind do you need for God to blow in your life? Lord, I'm tired. I'm seeking you. I'm doing everything that I'm supposed to do. I do believe, but somewhere I just feel like I need help. I need an extra push. I need someone to be interceding for me. I need you because I'm not going to make it without you. And I am making a clarion call for anybody in this building, in this room, in the balcony, in overflow, to come and allow God to intercede on your behalf, to break some things that have been causing you to fear of going higher, fear of bouncing back and get your second win today. Get a second wind to blow in your life so you have the biggest and the best fight that you've ever had. Come. God is here to meet you. Every moment that you may feel like, I don't know what's happening, it's working for you. And God wants to minister to you today to let you know this moment is working for you. Don't doubt him. Just My brothers and sisters, you've just heard a word and your heart might be prompted to say, what must I do to be a part of the kingdom of God? Well, I'm gonna tell you, it's quite simple. The Bible says in Romans 10 and 10 that if we would confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God raised him from the grave, we would be saved. Yes. Coming into relationship with Jesus as Savior is just that simple. So I want you to repeat after me, and then I want you to consider what the next steps are. So say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I confess you as my Lord and Savior. I believe that God raised you from the grave for the remission of my sins. I thank you and ask that you come into my heart, fill me with the Holy Spirit, and we thank you for making me child of God in Jesus name. If you prayed that prayer, welcome to the family of God. All of heaven is throwing a party because of you. I want to take this opportunity to thank you for your generosity. This is an opportunity that I don't take for granted. I want to let you know that every donation goes towards expanding the kingdom, providing hope to communities, bringing families together, and helping people set the course towards purpose. Your generosity makes all of that happen. So I encourage you and thank you at the same time. Now here are some instructions, some housekeeping items as a part of Living the Word Church. We need to make certain that in order for us to allocate resources properly, especially assign those resources to your name, that when you're giving via Cash App, that you put your full name in the memo line. We definitely understand the actual handles can be different and quirky and all kinds of names, but in order for us to allocate those resources to your name, just in the memo, put your full name in the memo. In addition, when you're giving via check or if you're filling out an envelope, it is essential that you fill out all of the details so we can properly allocate those resources to your household. Let's go deeper and let's trust that God has even more as we sow today. Thank you.